Friday, November 14th, 2008, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The International Space Station is about to make contact with amateur radio station WH6PN in Honolulu, Hawaii, an Earth station for the ARIS program. Connected to WH6PN by telephone are three schools, Poolsville High School in Poolsville, Maryland, Enlo Magnet School in Raleigh, North Carolina, and Academia Cotopaxi in Quito, Ecuador. Students at these three schools have been preparing for weeks for a brief conversation with Commander Mike Finke aboard the ISS. At Enlo High School, members of the Raleigh Amateur Radio Society have also been preparing to help the students make the contact and to broadcast it live over the W4DW repeater. The space station is coming into range. NA1SS, this is WA6PN Honolulu calling for a scheduled contact. Do you copy? Over. Go ahead, code epoxy. Leandro, has oxygen brought into the ISS, and do you need to bring fresh oxygen, or can you recycle the air? Over. Yes, uh, we actually make a lot of our own oxygen by using electricity to break up our water. So instead of bringing oxygen as gas, we bring it in water, and then we break it apart with electricity. Over. Владимир, какое оборудование вы используете в вашей ежедневной работе и какие специальные навыки и знания вам требуются? Over. How do you prepare yourself, both physically and mentally, for the challenges of living in space? Over. Something I wanted to do my entire life, so all the challenges seem like fun. But I have to admit I'm very supported by my family, my wife, my kids, my friends, and more importantly, my crewmates. We get along together and we make the mission happen. It's a lot of fun. Over. Leandro, if a compass won't work in space, so there is no north, south, east, west, how can you indicate direction? Over. Nice to hear your voice in space, and uh, we, that's a very good question. We have an entire computer system devoted to our navigation and guidance and control. We have to know very carefully where we are so we can point our solar arrays to the sun to get maximum electricity, and so that our antennas can communicate with the other satellites and the ground. Over. Hannah, how are scientists working to overcome the effects of radiation on a trip to Mars? Also, do you think that exposure to cosmic rays is a risk that you are comfortable taking? Over. Anna, that's a great question. Uh, when we, we are here aboard the space station, we are protected by the Earth's magnetic belts called the Van Allen radiation belts. They protect us. However, once we relieve, relieve those belts, we are exposed to a lot more radiation, and this is a big problem for us going to Mars. So maybe someone like yourself can help us figure out the answer. Over. Daniel. What are the benefits of conducting experiments and studies in space? Over. Uh, there are so many things in space that, uh, that make things better than on the ground. With uh, the microgravity environment, we can see how physical processes actually work without the, the influence of gravity. And we're able to understand fundamental physics better, as well as medicine, and by being able to grow big crystals. And there are so many things that we benefit on Earth by experimenting in space. Over. Aaliyah, we learned that in the ISS, muscles atrophy and disuse of bone causes osteopenia. Will growing children ever be able to live in space and still grow over? That is a great question. I think growing children will have problems in zero gravity, where we are in the International Space Station, but I hope that children will be able to grow up on the moon and Mars. So maybe someday my grandchildren, my great-great-grandchildren, will be able to grow up on Mars. I hope so. Over. Chris, what are the differences between performing scientific experiments on Earth as opposed to doing them on the space station? Also, what effects will these experiments have on our daily lives here on Earth? Over. Chris, one of the biggest differences is that we're up here by ourselves. We have to do everything by ourselves. And yet, our team on the ground, who are the real specialists, they have to uh, they have to help us from afar. 
So having that teamwork without actual physical contact is really is the most challenge and the biggest difference. And these experiments that we're doing can really help life on Earth. For example, on my last mission, we had an ultrasound machine, and I, I didn't know anything about it, and yet they showed me how to become almost as good as a doctor in taking images. And that has good potential for poor villages that don't have doctors, but we can have somebody without much training go, t go use the ultrasound machine. Over. Jacob, what was the weirdest experiment ever performed on the space station? Over. That's a good question, Jacob. Uh, there are so many different ones, and they all are interesting. One of the most uh, weirdest ones was to put a blindfold on us and float us around the different parts of the space station to see how we react. Over. Pedro, we watched the ISS video on astronauts eating food and playing with floating spherical materials. What will happen in a medical emergency on ISS with spurting blood and other body fluids? Over. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, we've been very lucky so far and very careful so we don't have these kind of medical emergencies. Yes, the blood would behave very much like all those other fluids, so we would have to make sure we clean that up. We, ha we don't have any doctors on board, but we have a lot of doctors on the ground, and we have enough training so the doctors on the ground can tell us what to do. And we have a lot of good medical equipment on board also. Over. Alex, what has been the greatest challenge physically or the greatest physical obstacle with regards to space travel that you've had to overcome and how did you do it? Over. Uh, the, the greatest challenge physically is to be healthy enough to pass the astronaut physical examination. We have to have no diseases and to be very healthy and uh, that is the toughest part. Actually flying is easy because it's so difficult to make it past the, the medical qualifications. Over. Megan, how do you deal with health issues in space? Over. Yes, health issues in space. Well, we have to take a lot of examinations while we're up here, and we report all the exam results down to the doctors on the ground. And so by communicating with them and taking lots of tests, issues can be addressed early, and they can see it coming. Over. Nicholas, now that you have seen Earth from space, do you have a different perspective about Earth? Over. Sí, eso es verdad. El mundo es, uh, uh, the world is so beautiful, and uh, and we look down on the earth and we say, wow, it's so beautiful, and then we look up in the heavens and see the whole rest of the universe, and we look down and we say, why is everybody fighting? So my perspective is different. I don't want anybody to fight on the earth, and I think we should all go explore space together. It's a big, big universe. Over. Brandon, what character traits and academic background does a person need if they want to become an astronaut? Over. Well, the academic background, Brandon, needs to be in, uh, in math or science or some kind of technical field. And the character is somebody that never gives up, that works hard, plays well with others, and, and doesn't, doesn't give up on their dreams. Over. Peter, would you support and or participate in a venture to move the ISS to a Mars orbit? Over. Uh, Peter, I think we should go to Mars. This space station isn't meant to, to go to Mars. This space station's only meant to be around Earth. Uh, we would have to redesign it completely to be able to go to Mars. But I think we should put a station around Mars someday. Over. Leandro, would mold grow on a piece of lost food? And where would the mold come from? Over. Great question. Yes, if we lost a piece of food, the mold will grow on it. And we still have air in our air, no matter how pure we make it. Well, there's, uh, there is mold spores everywhere and fungus and things like that, so we have to be careful to keep our space station clean. Over. Vladimir, what предметы вы изучали в институте, чтобы быть космонавтом? Over. Group, thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.